back to the shop. We're working again on the uh, Cub Cadet Mini Bulldozer. Last time we left off with the tensioner uh, largely complete with the exception of the uh, release arm. And that's what I'm working on now, just finalizing that. I have a piece of one inch aluminum that was actually a release arm prototype I used for the motor grader. So I'm doing basically the same release mechanism I had on the motor grader. I need to mill the slot in this arm about a half inch longer to provide clearance for the tension rod. I'm going to do that and once I do that we can put this on. I think we're pretty much complete on the tensioner. We'll assemble it. Take a look at that. This is a 3D printed, I printed this on my 3D printer adapter, which lets you use a socket and a drill to raise the knee. Pretty cool.
All right, so we just need to make sure that this rod, the tension rod, fits, holes line up this way, you know, as well as this way. And I think we we're in pretty good shape. Let me put a cotter pin through that. Got the tensioner, at least this first implementation of it, finished. Uh, the lever tensions the belt, detensions it so you can start the engine. I'm not, you know, I'm not um, totally satisfied with this. I'll probably revisit this at some point, but at least this gets me, you know, a step closer to an operating machine. And, I mean, it's functional if it's not if it's not elegant. So I'll probably cut this shorter. It's lo much longer than I need. Maybe, maybe almost cut it in half. Anyway, we'll come back if we have to do that later. All right. So.
haven't used this close quarters Milwaukee drill in probably 15 or 20 years. And even it's having trouble here. Trying to get the right size drill bit to tap these holes. Quarter inch bit fits, but this 1764, which is what I need to tap the 516 holes. Yeah. It's just quarter inch too long. Well, there's a solution to that. Six and a half inches. I'm going to cut two pieces off of this control sleeve. One short piece, about a quarter inch long, that I'll weld into the bracket. And then I'll cut another piece about an inch long that will create space for the uh, friction clamp.
that's all we need to create a sleeve the right diameter for to hold the shaft. created this space here by cutting a piece off of the sleeve. I'm going to create two clamps out of polyethylene material to create friction and one will clamp around the tube and one will clamp around the shaft and those will provide the friction that we need for the controls. These will clamp on the three quarter inch shaft. These have a larger radius to clamp on the one inch shaft.
I want to use the nylock nuts on here. I don't know if I have enough. Um, looks like I'm short one safety nut or nylock quarter inch 20 nut. So the idea is these polyethylene strips, actually it's uh, starboard, but these polyethylene strips will clamp over the two shafts, the two control shafts, and provide a friction fit. That's the idea. We'll see how it works. does provide pretty good friction so I think it's going to work. I do need to get safety nuts or nylock nuts for here. I don't think I have them in the 5 16 size but I think this will work as a friction mechanism. Just on one side need to account for the bolt heads. I am getting good friction, so I think these poly clamps will work on this shaft. These rods, of course, go through each side and will constrain these poly stra straps and I can adjust the tension with these bolts. I do need to get safety nuts or nylock. I have nylock in the quarter inch. I don't have any in the 5 16 I do need to solve the problem of the bolt heads here being too close to 
this, the answer may be cut this off some more and move it over and put a spacer, but then that puts my control arms, my handles, one handle here, one handle here, so close together. There may be some advantage to having them very close close together so you can grip them both with one hand and push them both forward or pull them both backwards or turn them with your two hands so that might not be a problem. So I think the thing to do here is go ahead and cut about a half inch off here. I'll move that piece to the other side and that will provide clearance and it will then allow us to look at welding the control handles here. I think we've solved the friction mechanism. Let's go ahead and I'll cut the piece off of this use it as a spacer. I have to make sure if when I weld to these I can't have these strips there they'll melt so what I may do is weld stub shafts that I will then attach handles to. I don't want to weld on the long handles quite yet so perhaps welding on a stub shaft in each place is the answer. I'll we'll have to think about that. This worked out. I think this, is, this gives us line of sight to the friction mechanism for the hydro controls. I think this is going to work. I have to put the quarter inch bolts through both ends here and clamp them down. Get nylock nuts for here. Then the tension will be, the friction will be adjustable. Just need to decide what I'm going to do for the handles. I'll put a handle here and a handle here. I need to decide if I'm going to weld on a stub shaft and then eventually add a handle to it or go ahead and I think that's what I'm going to do because I want to be able to work on the tractor without having the handle sticking up all the time. So I may weld a 
couple of half inch shafts to these two locations maybe three inches long and then I can always add a piece of 5 8 inch tubing over the shaft and pin it or bolt it in place so that it'll be removable. I think that will be more convenient to have those handles be removable. I'll look and see if McMaster has a heavy wall tubing with a half inch diameter, slightly larger than half inch diameter. Want a close fit. All right, I think we're okay here. Let's move on to the sprocket and the wheel circle, the whole circle we need to drill in the sprocket and the spacers on the hubs. I've got the sprocket set up here on the mill table. My plan is to drill the four and a half inch five bolt circle using the DRO. You can go out to the internet and plug in your circle diameter and the number of holes and the size of the holes and it will give you the DRO coordinates to drill the five equally spaced holes. That's one way of doing it. The other way is to put it in a rotary table and space off the center, the required radius, and then drill holes at the different degrees around the circle, rotate the device. I have a rotary table, but it's a little small for this. It is an 8 inch rotary table. Potentially could use it for this application, but it's just as easy to clamp it to the table, use the coaxial. I have my coaxial indicator here set up. I will center the sprocket on the axis of the mill and then use the DRO, zero out the DRO and then use the DRO to drill to find the locations for the, for the five holes. I'm going to quickly rotate it and make sure that it's close. Right now I'm about within 15 thousandths. It's running between the 20 and about 8, so that's about 12 thousandths. So it's pushing in on this side so I need to go about ten thousand ten thousandths in this direction Basically cut it in half. Alright, and now let's cut the y-axis in half. Low there, high, high on the x-axis. Bring it back. low on the Y. Let's go in half of that distance. Try that. Okay, at this point I'm about three, three thousandths 
that's low, that's high. Bring down the y, the x-axis. I can bring the y-axis in a little bit. So that shows us centered within a thousandth of an inch, which is plenty. So let's go up here and zero out the DRO. at zero, zero. I'm back in the shop working on the dozer. Today's task is to drill the bolt circle for the sprocket, drive sprocket. This is the first of the two drive sprockets. I've got it clamped in the on the mill table here, spaced. Here it's actually spaced about three quarters of an inch above the table, clamped in place. I've got the coordinates for the DRO, digital readout, and the first hole is going to be at 2.25 on the x-axis, 0 on the y-axis. The second hole is uh, 0.6953 on the x-axis and 2.1399 on the y-axis. Third hole, fourth hole, fifth hole. So these coordinates on the, on the DRO, which is zeroed out, since the, the sprocket is centered under the spindle right now. And I'm going to, I don't know how hard this material is. I'm going to, I have a, I'm um, drilling 5 8 inch holes. I went back and looked at the hubs and all those holes are 5 8 of an inch. And then they have a, a bevel or a chamfer on them. So I've got the 5 8 inch bit, got a chamfering bit, got a center drill. I'm going to hit the hole with a center drill first and then change out to the half inch, the 5 8 inch drill. Well, look who I've got here. There's my Brutus coming in to visit, checking on me all the time. What a good boy. You're my good puppy. Yeah, you're a good boy. Okay. He just wants to make sure that he's, if he's looking for a treat, I don't know. Um, I've got the 5 8 inch brand new, it's a brand new 5 8 inch bit, so it's good and sharp. And then I'll come back and switch it and chamfer uh, the holes as I go around. And the chamfer is for the lug nuts. They have, I mean, as you know, a, a, a taper on them to seat. The bolts are actually... Um, half inch fine thread. Um, I think it's um, what half inch 20. Anyway, we'll see how hard this metal is. I don't have it, whether it's been tempered. If I wind up having trouble drilling it, then I'm going to have to get a carbide, carbide bit, and that may be in the next episode then. Okay, let's give this a shot. Right, so we run the DRO over to two point two five zero zero.
That drilled fine. The drill didn't have any really any trouble going through that. So that's good news. That's the first one. Put the center drill back in. Let's move to the second hole. All right, we want um, exit point six nine five three. chatter there. So I'm just doing a sanity check here just to make sure that you know I'm in the in the ballpark here. I just don't want to mess up. I'm gonna put a paint dot next to each stud. That's just to keep me honest, make sure I don't um, have a major goof up. Okay, let's go to the next hole. It is X minus 1.82.
All right, so now comes the test. That's perfect. So the holes, the holes like in these hubs are 5 eighths inch and then they have the chamfer on them, even though the studs are half an inch. So I drilled these the same size, 5 eighths. Unfortunately, these are probably not long enough. Yeah, maybe they are. I was going to say long enough for the to be able to bolt them. All right, looks like this is done. Let's take it over to the hub and see how that goes. We had talked previously about using five inches, five inches of spacers. This has four inches, uh, two, two inch spacers. We talked about five inches and I may still add another one inch spacer though. I'm going to maybe try to get by with the, with the four inches. Hate to stack another spacer on there. Two inches was the largest spacer I could find, and I've actually, you know, had to stack two two-inch spacers. I still have an issue that I haven't decided what I'm going to do with the actual hubs. The threads on the hubs are seven sixteenths, and the spacers are all half inch. So it's a 7 16 fine thread. I don't know whether I hesitate to drill these out and re-thread them to a half inch because they're, you know, already close to the edge as it is. And drilling them out risks drilling them off center. I don't want to take them off and try to do it with some setup. So I'm um, what I may try to do is put I can put 7/16 studs in from the rear and I don't know maybe put a spacer over them or something. I mean the 7/16 studs are plenty strong enough. 5 of them. It's just you know getting the hubs with the 5 8 the spacers with 5 8 inch holes in them to be centered. There's so much slop that it's, it creates a challenge in getting those spacers centered on the hubs. You don't have to be perfect since we're not, it's not a car going you know, down the road at 50 miles an hour. The RPMs are relatively low if it's a little bit off a sixteenth of an inch or something, you'd never notice it. But it could be as much as a quarter inch off if it slides all the way to one side. And that, that is the five eighths inch holes. Let me show you. So there's a lot of play. Uh, not quite a quarter of an inch, but certainly three sixteenths. So getting these, you know, getting this hub, this spacer bolted to the hub, you know, creates an issue. I did get some seven sixteenths 
fine thread lug nuts at Napa. Well, that may be the answer right there. Using the 7 16 lug nut, since it's tapered, it fits that taper. I mean, it's that would work. Okay, so I think that's. I got those yesterday at the Napa store. I bought a couple of half inch studs, studs thinking I might swap, you know, drill out those holes and thread in the half inch studs so that the thread would be the same and all the nuts would be the same but I think I can use the 7 16 lug nuts they fit down inside that hole and the taper will center them so I think that's the that's the answer I just need to get you know 20 of these so, all right, I think that answers, answers the problem. I do need to get different size 7 16 bolts. What I have right now are these, I don't know, they're, they're probably two inches. What I need to do is get some that are threaded all the way to the head so I can screw them in from the back side and they'll stick out about an inch. So I need like inch and a half. And that way I can use those lug nuts and thread thread the lug nuts on and convert these from threaded holes to studs. So that's what I need to do. So I need to get 20 shorter 7 16 bolts. Okay, so drive sprocket on. Let's put the track on it. Check it out from the front. I think that looks. I think that looks good. That's six inches. There's six inches between the edge of the track and the frame. By the time we put, I may need to go another inch. I think I do. By the time we put a panel, metal panel on here to protect your legs from the tracks, that'll reduce the width here. I mean, my foot's almost six inches wide. So I do need another inch, so I'm going to order a set, another set of one inch spacers. Bring this out. Decisions, decisions. This is all part of the process without a plan per se, a blueprint. That's, that's how it goes. That's how we're doing this, or how I'm doing it. I ordered the other two sections of chain and the other drive sprocket this morning. And I ordered the half inch ID. It's actually just a little bit over half inch ID tubing for the control handles. So that'll be here for the next episode. I have a cooling fan that clamps to this this shaft that's normally used in these Cub Cadets for cooling the hydro. With my linkages here I don't know that I'll have enough room my control linkages for the for the hydro so I think I'll have an interference so I'm it looks like I'm going to wind up installing electric fans for cooling I have one electric fan. This 
is this is probably even overkill for what you need, but certainly this would work. So I, I think the plan then is to go ahead and install a pair of electric fans for cooling the hydro. So that'll come later after the whole machine is is operational. I can drop a fan down in here and mount it. There'll be a lot, plenty of airflow from the engine coming forward that the grill might direct down anyway. So we might get some cooling that way, but that would be warm air or hot air. We've got the fans. So I think that's where we're going to go with the, with the cooling the hydros is a pair of electric fans. Where's my brew brew? There are my boys. Here's my Brutus. Where's my Butchie? There comes my Butchie. How you guys doing? Just coming in to check on things. Heading back outside. It's a nice day outside. Weather's starting to cool down. Since I removed the brace we had here previously, I'm going to finish this off, weld these miter pieces on, and then a straight piece across, just to finish it off. I have an idea for what I'm going to do here, but I'm not just fully decided yet, so that, I guess, to some extent remains to be seen. So. I'll cut a piece to fit here. Trying to do better on my welds, not putting down so much metal, building up so much metal, minimizing the amount that needs to be ground away. 
I'm pretty much a, a newbie when it comes to welding. So I can grind, I'll grind that flush. That'll look a lot better th that way. And then what goes on the front there will be uh, something interesting, I'm sure. <laughs> not, not real sure. I have some ideas, but I'm not ready to share them at this point. Okay. All right, I appreciate you guys watching all the comments. I try to read and answer all the comments. A uh, couple of comments I see frequently you know, what are you, are you a machinist? Were you, what were you, what was your profession? I answered that question a couple times, but it keeps coming up. I'm a retired engineer, though most of my career was not really in hardcore engineering roles. It was more in business roles. And uh, so I've been retired a few years. And the other question is why are you building the drives this way? And I think if you go back to the first design episode and the first couple of build episodes you'll uh, you'll learn that the only way I could use Cub Cadet components and independently control the tracks that is be able to drive one track forward and the other one in reverse to spin in place which you can't do with an open differential and brakes which is the way most of these things are built I think my modification of the differentials and using them this way is a unique, I don't think it's ever been done. If you've seen it done, let me know because I, I've, I've not seen it done. I think it's a unique application. I'm trying as much as possible to use Cub Cadet components. That's why I'm not using hydraulic motors off a of skid steer or hydros off of a zero turn or something like that. This is a Cub Cadet. The other question is about horsepower. And I know this is 14 horsepower. It's not going to build a road. I'm not going to clear land, push over trees with it. It just doesn't have the weight to do that much work to begin with. Certainly the 14 horsepower will move it along. It's a toy. I mean, seriously, it is. I may do a little bit of landscaping with it, push some dirt around, repair the driveway, something like that. That's all it's going to be used for. And maybe it might go to a tractor show. So it's not intended to be something I would use. I don't need a bulldozer for any particular purpose. So this is all about the build and not about so much the capability of the end product. Uh, I think 14 horsepower certainly will move under its own power. There's no question about that. And it'll push some dirt around. Uh, it is geared, it is geared very low. So it, it will have some power at low speed. It certainly won't push a lot of dirt at high speed, but because of the gearing, it should work fine at low speed. All right, that about wraps up this episode. We'll come back next week to work on to finish up the controls. I need to run the controls, the control, the linkage from the control arms back to the trunnions and back and forwards to the two trunnions work on that. We'll drill and bolt the, the hood frame, the hood and dash support frame to the main frame and the seat riser to the frame. We'll get those installed. I will get the spacers for the one inch spacers for the hubs. And I'm going to start working on the idler wheels. I ordered two more sections of the conveyor chain and another sprocket. We'll have to drill the other sprocket, put the whole circle in the other sprocket. Uh, thumbs up and a comment would be great. I try to read all the comments. I actually do read all the comments. I try to answer all the questions that, that you guys ask. And I appreciate you watching. We'll see you guys on the next episode.